Today, 14 candidates for the public protector position are being interviewed by an ad hoc committee. I'm joined on Skype by political analyst Daniel Silk, and he's going to give us some insight into what we've been seeing today. Hello, Daniel. Hello there. Good to be with you. All right. Well, 14 candidates being interviewed one after the other today. It's, it's been quite a long day. Look, it's an exhausting day for the committee and one does wonder, you know, the effectiveness of having everybody over the course of this one day uh, for such a critical position uh, occupying such uh, an important space in our democracy to uh, have to uh, curtail some of these interviews. But nevertheless, I think one is getting an interesting gist of A, the selection uh, of candidates, their different histories, their contributions. And clearly also we're getting a fair amount of political points scoring from the members of the committee, the parliamentary committee as well. Now let's talk about those candidates. Have there been any standout candidates for you so far? Well, I'm not quite sure that there have been standout candidates. I think we've seen some interesting interactions between the committee and some of the candidates. It's case of Sai, how he was really questioned quite heavily on a number of issues, not only his previous political affiliations, current political affiliations for that matter, as all of the candidates were, uh, but also on personal matters which uh, were dredged up again in front of the panel. Uh, and I think uh, clearly uh, the opposition and in particular Democratic Alliance members of the panel were, were quite keen to be particularly uh, critical uh, of his history as well. Uh, in terms of uh, standout uh, candidates, no, I don't think it's fair to really claim that any were standouts. But I think that we've seen a variety of candidates really get not only to the core of what the Office of the Public Protector is, but also express themselves on either past legal issues, express themselves on Nkandla as well, uh, and express themselves on the uh, Al-Bashir saga, as we've seen uh, and these are quite interesting references to South Africa's recent political life, to strategic decisions made by the state. Um, in fact, these hearings are not just about the individual personalities and what they bring to the office. It's very much also a hearing about how South Africa has performed, how that office of the public protector and South Africa's legal system as well as practiced by the state has also performed over the course of the last number of years. Now, you mentioned Desai. By, by some political analysts, he has been named as one of the front runners um, going into the interviews today. And you mentioned uh, his interaction with the committee uh, allegations, of course, the accusations of rape made against him in, in 2004. Do these interactions and um, these, I guess, revelations in the interview process put, put him and put the other candidates in, in a different position than they were in going going into these interviews? Well, look, I think that uh, this is an interrogation, and it's quite right that there's an interrogation. Don't forget this position of public protector has become even more dramatic in the context of recent years in South Africa. Uh, it's a position really that could be argued is the bulwark between uh, a functional and a dysfunctional state. It's good for our democracy. Uh, it does also point to the fact that no holes are barred in this kind of question and answer session. Uh, but I don't think it necessarily changes our perception or it won't change the perception to any great degree of the views of the committee itself. Um, I think clearly the committee will be looking for uh, some sort of apolitical commitment uh, from the, uh, the applicants. In other words, uh, clearly bias and bias towards the ruling party is really what the opposition parties are trying to ferret out. Clearly also in conjunction with looking at uh, past activities, past judgments and political beliefs of candidates as well. So I think when it comes to establishing bias, and that's going to be the critical issue here, who can be the best qualified in what could be an unbiased as possible fashion as, 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 as humanly possible. That, I think, is going to be the key going forward. Uh, but ultimately, of course, this is a committee that will have to make a decision. It is a politically laden and politically heavy committee. And there could be some very, very tough negotiations on who's going to get this uh, 
this nod, especially as we move into an era in which President Zuma himself may find his position again untenable, questioned again as he moves towards some sort of retirement or end of his term, either on time in 2019 or before the 2019 cutoff.